Okay, I'm calling Tom Seaborn. Hey, Hello? Tom. Yeah, you're you're cutting in and out. Am I I'm okay right now? Yep, good okay, now. Okay, good. How you doing today, buddy? Good. How's everything? Oh, it's going pretty good. Uh, what would you like to talk about today about a good health tip for everybody? You know what I see, Jeff? I, I see this day in and day out that students, uh, older folks, everybody, they overtrain. You know, they, they're overzealous. They're trying to get in shape for the spring, for bathing suit season, and they're hitting it hard every single day, and they're not giving enough recovery time. And, you know, when you're hammering the same muscle group in the weight room or you're doing sprints every day or taking a spinning class every day, uh, your muscles need a, a time to recover, including your heart muscle. And, and that's why it's recommended to do only maybe two or three hard spinning workouts a week and to space them out as far apart as possible. And then, of course, you as well as everybody else knows that when you train each muscle group as far as in the, in the gym to only hit each muscle group a maximum of twice a week. And, you know, even the cardio training that people come up with on their own, they may come up with some sort of a sprint routine, like they'll sprint to a tree and then recover till the next tree. That's fine to do two or three times a week, but if they do that every day, those muscle fibers don't have a chance to recover. And then they're also, their heart is not recovering properly and, and they may be overtraining. Well, you know, I, I, that is a fact because I've, I've overtrained more than a few times in my life. And, uh, I kept seeing not just myself, but I knew another girl that did the same thing. You have a tendency to swell up a little bit, like become puffy. And, uh, for whatever reason, your body can't get rid of the lactic acid like it normally should. Have you uh, seen well, that happen? You know, yeah. You, okay. And, and another thing, you know, something that is a really easy trick to, to discover if you're overtraining is to just take your heart rate every morning. When you wake up, your resting heart rate shouldn't be above normal. If, if it's 10 beats above your normal resting heartbeat, you know, like let's say your normal resting heart rate is 72 beats per minute, but then you uh, one, one morning you wake up and you take your resting heart rate and, and it's 82. Well, that should be either a rest day or what's called active recovery where you're, you're moving around but not sprinting or doing more damage that doesn't allow your body to recover. And, and you're correct that, you know, inflammation is going to occur when you hammer your joints or your muscles to the point that they don't have time to recover. And, and that may be what you're referring to with the swelling, maybe in your case. But, yeah, uh, you know, when, if you feel joint pain, if you feel lethargic, if you don't feel like training, or even if you feel like training but your heart rate's up, that may be a time to take a day off or at least to cut down on the intensity of your workout. I've always heard that if you take two days off in a row, you know, two designated days in a row to take off, that that is usually a pretty good 48-hour recovery time. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing. But uh, you, you're exactly right when it comes to hard course. You know, you may have seen in the literature high-intensity, H-I-I-T, high-intensity type training. When when we do anything that stresses the heart or the muscles, and you're, you're correct that you need at least two days Generally, I mean, you know, there, you know what, Jeff, I've got to admit, there's always the exception to the rule. And, you know, whenever we spout a principle, then there's going to be some guy that says, well, I only take one day off between workouts and I'm fine. But the harder a person trains, then the more recovery they need before that next workout where they're doing the same thing. Well, you know, I know we're talking about general conditioning, but if you have a high end uh, athlete like some of your bodybuilders, and uh, some of your sprinters, and then people that are, you know, like fighters, I mean, they have to train all the time just to keep their edge. Uh, is there a, such a thing as getting used to a workout or your body becoming accustomed to the routine and then it needs maybe a little more than your average person to uh, keep that edge or to keep moving forward? Yeah, that's interesting. With, with MMA and training, like you are saying, like hardcore bodybuilders sometimes training twice a day, uh, what, what everybody should remember, though, MMA guys, bodybuilders, all of them, is that the body increases the muscle size during the recovery period, not while they're hammering that muscle group. 
So that's why recovery time is important. So that if, if you're an MMA guy and you're training, uh, let's say you're doing your weight training in the morning, you're uh, punching and kicking the pads in the bag in the mid-afternoon, and then in the evening you're doing your grappling, that can work out fine if you're making sure to spread out because so, you're doing three different activities. So maybe you do that on a, a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But but if the guy's weight training every single day, unless he's targeting different muscle groups, which is kind of hard to do when you're when you're doing MMA, you, the type of weight training should be explosive, full body type of moves, not just biceps curls. So yeah, th- those guys should definitely take some days off of the weight room. But you're, you're correct that like let's say they need to keep that technical knowledge up. So they're, you know, they're playing around on the mat and all that, and they just have to be careful that when they're doing their mat work that they're not over-training those same muscles that they worked out in the gym that morning. Well, you know, you brought up an interesting point because I know you lift weights. I've known you to lift weights most of your life. Did you ever find out the combination of weight training and karate, which both of us were in, sometimes seemed to be counterproductive? No, <laughs> I felt the opposite. I, I really believe that uh, weight training. Well, look, look at a guy like Joe Lewis. That right. Uh, I mean, and most you know, real high, highly skilled martial artists. Uh, we, including Bruce Lee. Think about Bruce Lee, who was one of the first to show that when you strengthen a muscle, it becomes faster. Right. And when you make that muscle stronger, it also becomes more powerful because speed times force equals power. So yeah, uh, no. It, it, in my personal case, no. I, I think the weight room was great because it, what it did it, uh, for me and maybe some of my students and a lot of my colleagues, is that it also strengthens the muscle around the joints so that the injuries uh, don't don't uh, mount up as quickly. Well, you know, uh, I did a lot of weightlifting also, plus martial arts, bag work, and everything. Um, my concern was always the lactic acid and the joint pain. In other words the explosion coming back up through your arm, like on your elbow, your shoulder, and then the same thing with your knees um, and your hips and places like that. You know, That's what I meant when I said counterproductive. In other words, is it something you have to build up to? Or like if you take off for a while and come back, you have to kind of slowly or gradually work back into a routine? Otherwise, yeah, you're going to I mean, be... You, you're, you're right that w- with any type of training, you start slow, progress gradually. But uh, let me dispel a myth. Uh, and this, tell me if we're going over too long here. But no, it's okay. Lactic acid, yeah, yeah, lactic acid, lactate is a good thing. And by that I mean when you feel the burn, that's not lactate. That's hydrogen ions. And uh, lactate is, is there concomitant, meaning it's there at the same time. But lactate actually converts back into glycogen, which just means that it's sugar for your next uh, – high intensity move if you're hitting a bag or if you're doing sprints on a bike or whatever. So lactic acid, lactate is a good thing because it, again, it's fuel for your muscles. So that's what the type of, go ahead. That's what getting in shape is like. In other words, when you feel like you're getting in shape, would that have lactic acid be a part of that as far as uh, turning into glucose? Well, well, what you're doing is you're, you're tolerating those hydrogen ions and then the lactate is you're able to also handle more lactate in your muscles without giving up too soon. So, yeah, you're getting in better shape the more lactate that you can tolerate. But what you might be thinking about is what's called delayed onset muscle soreness, DOMS, which is the type of pain you feel from your workout a couple days later. Right. uh, Because you've actually caused micro tears in your muscle and uh, that inflammation that we talked about earlier. So, yeah, I mean... Think about lactate as being a good thing. You're, you're looking for the burn. Now, the, the burn isn't lactate. It's, that's a buffer. Lactate's a buffer. The hydrogen ions are causing the burn, but uh, the burn is good. And like you said, as you become more fit, you're able to tolerate that lactate and the hydrogen ions. And so then you're able to work more toward and getting into your what's called your anaerobic threshold, meaning when you're huffing and puffing and burning, that's what you, you want to be able to tolerate that feeling for as long as you can. Okay. Now, is there a, is there such a thing as getting used to it or is your body just processing it better, more efficiently? Or Boy, how- that's, that's a great, you, you stated it beautifully, both. Uh, some people don't feel the lack, you know, that hydrogen ion burn, you know, uh, one of, one of the high, highest, 